What's up guys, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and today we are going to do random loot. Now if you know how to script in Ruby, this is a super easy task to do, uh, building random loot. But if you don't know uh, scripting in Ruby, don't worry, you can still make a random loot system calling on common events. It just takes a little more work. So what we're going to do right off the bat is we're going to go to our items and we're going to put all the items that we want to have in our, uh, in our random loot tables in the same spot. If you're just starting a new project, then you'll have items 1 to 16, and you can use that. <clears throat> so we're just going to take note of how many items that we're going to have. So 16 here. Say we have a few weapons. Say we'll get like 10 weapons. That's 26. And we'll say to make it an even 50, we'll just do um, another 24 different armors. So we'll have 50 random items. So now that we know how many items... Uh, weapons and armors we want to have in our random loot table we keep that number in mind and we're going to go to common events so under, un, uh, underneath common events change your maximum so you have a free space to play with uh, select a free space and just call it random loot or whatever you like to call it we don't have to set a trigger because we're going to call it then we're going to insert um, a variable change so we're going to control variables now we need to create a new variable to store the number that we're going to randomly generate so s select a slot and uh, use it only for this. So we'll say in this case 22 and we're going to call this one uh, example random loot. But you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Just remember the number. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set that to a random number between 1 and the, the number of items that we're going to pick. So if you have 50 items, you can do 50. If you're just going to do 10, you can do 10. Just You're going to need to have um, the number exact to the number of items you have. Otherwise you might open a chest and a random loot and you get nothing because there's no items stored in that slot. So we'll click, we'll select 1 to 50 because we have 50 specific items that we're going to put in the tables and then we hit OK. And so now when we uh, call this rent this common event it's gonna pick a random number between 1 and 50 but that's all it's gonna do. So uh, underneath that we need to tell it um, if the condition we're gonna create a conditional branch <coughs> excuse me and we're gonna say if the variable uh, example random loot is equal to one, um, we're going to uncheck set handling when conditions do not apply because we're going to have to do this several times and we don't need to have an else handler. So we're going to uncheck that box and set the constant to one. When our variable is equal to one, we hit OK. And we we're telling it to do this. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to play uh, a sound effect or an animation or whatever. Um, I'm just going to play, I guess we'll do an animation because animations have sound effects as well. Pick any animation you want to play when you call on this event, like when you open a chest, something shiny happens. So um, I'll just use um, BC Rand Award because it's just what I called my animation that I made for this. You don't have to have wait for completion checked. You can if you want to. We'll just hit OK. Underneath that, we're going to change items. So then we're going to change items to say um, we'll pick the first 16 items for our, uh, first. So we'll go potion, increase by however many you want to award. And then we're going to say show text, you found a potion. Um, and this whole uh, format is up to you, what you want it to look like. I use a dim background with uh, middle positioning. But uh, you can do whatever you like to this. This is just for your flavor. You obtained, you found, you got, whatever you like to say. Hit OK. And basically, when you call on this, this uh, common event, it's going to generate a random number. And if that number comes up number one, then they're going to get a potion and they're going to play this animation and it's going to say you found a potion. Now what you're going to do is you're going to repeat this process for every single item. I know it's a lot of work, but um, if you don't know Ruby scripting, this is a way to get around it. But one thing you can do is uh, left click at the top, hold shift, and then left click at the bottom. It'll highlight everything, or you could just click on... Uh, control uh, actually you don't want to uh, copy the control variable so instead just left click on control branch or conditional branch rather right click that copy that go underneath it paste it now we're just gonna change uh, right off the top we're gonna go down edit the conditional branch when the number is equal to 2 we're gonna do this so we can have the animation the same um, it's up to you I would just leave it the same so it's a uh, you have some sort of a system that you know People get used to seeing, oh, that flashy light means I got something. Uh, then we're going to go to the next one. High potion increased by one. And we'll change this to say, you found a high potion. And you'll do this for every single item you want to have in your random loot. I'm not going to make all these items, but you guys see the process of what I'm doing. I'm changing the number uh, by adding one. So when this number is three, 
you get this and we'll award uh, a full potion and then you you let the person uh, the player know that you found a full potion and uh, and so forth and so on till you have all the numbers now when you have all 50 filled out or however many you want like we could have three so we'll set this to three pick a number between one and three random number so we're setting a variable to, to a random number between one and three and when that variable is one they're gonna get a potion when it's two they'll get a high potion three they're gonna get a high potion so now the next thing we're gonna, we're gonna hit okay and now we're gonna create an event so in this new event you can have it look like whatever you want if you want to look at a treasure chest, there's another workaround to make uh, make this even easier. Right click, go to quick event creation, go to treasure chest. And it doesn't matter, just say zero gold because we're going to edit that out anyway. So it's going to play the opening the treasure chest sound effect. It's going to uh, play the move route for the uh, animation to open. The direction fix is already on so the item doesn't change graphic when you talk to it from a different direction. It's going to control self switch uh, A on. <clears throat> you can change this to... Uh, uh, a built-in switch. You don't have to use a self switch in case you want to have the, a treasure chest. I'll show you guys in a minute what I'm talking about, how I did it, um, so that you can close this treasure chest so that they can open it multiple times. They just have to get to it. Um, so we're going to get rid of the delete, or we're going to delete the gold uh, and say that you found zero gold because there's no point in that. But what we're going to do here is we're going to call uh, before actually before the switch, we're going to insert a call common event. So that should be somewhere right here. Maybe it's on tab two. I'm sure you guys see it and you're like, Drifty, it's right there. Uh, I had to do this a bunch of times yesterday. You'd think I'd remember where it's at. Here it is, under flow control tab one, call common event. And now we're going to call on the random loot. And then we're going to hit OK. <clears throat> Yeah, we called it random loot. So when they open up this chest, it's going to uh, activate everything that was in the random loot uh, common event. So we'll to test it really quickly, we're going to uh, left right click and then go to set starting position, set the player starting position, save the game, hit play. Let's open up this chest, and we should see an animation, and we should also uh, get one item, either a regular potion, high potion, or full potion. You found a potion. Did it actually give us the potion? Yeah, it gave us the potion. Sweet, so that was random loot. And let me show you guys a more advanced version of this whole system. We don't need that anymore. So I've created this uh, repeatable dungeon. And in this dungeon, I have a bunch of uh, variables and switches. Um, the final treasure chest is going to turn off one, two, three, four, five, six, seven switches. And it's gonna turn on one and then create a move event. Basically, you get teleported in here after talking to an NPC. You come down here and you walk over these uh, little circles. And when you walk over these circles, it's going to call a random battle. So we'll go over calling random battles too. You're going to do basically the same thing, but you're so you're going to create a new common event for that. Oh, not scripting. Um, for random battles, it's a very very simple uh, thing to do. Random battles. All you have to do first is go to your uh, troops and decide from what to what do you want to have uh, in your random battle. So in my random battle script uh, event I have uh, between 32 and all the way down to 89 different types of battles that could happen. I don't know why I keep closing that. Uh, so basically we're going to do the same thing. We right click, we insert, we control variables and in that uh, control variable you set a, a new uh, variable and, and for mine I've selected a random battle call and then we're gonna set that to a random number between whatever number where your troops start and then to the, the to the number where the troops end so for me I want the troops 32 to 87 to be in this call and then what you would do is hit battle processing and instead of selecting what battle you want you designate it with the variable so you just select the one that says uh, random battle that's the one that you're um, that you just made <clears throat> and then what it does is going to battle process it's going to pick that number and start the battle for whatever random number that was drawn so that's a way to create random battles without uh, having them just you know get a, an encounter by walking they they know that when they're going to get attacked they can walk around all day back and forth here and they won't get into a, 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 a battle because we have no encounters on 
but when they, as soon as they walk on this little uh, pentagram circle thing, a battle initiates. So this happens, and then at the end of this, we're going to control a switch that just turns a... You're going to need a switch for every one of these battles. You don't want to use a self-switch if you want to do a repeatable dungeon. If it's not a repeatable dungeon, you can just use a self-switch and it'll stay off forever. <clears throat> But if you want it to be a trigger that you can a switch that you can turn back on at the end of the dungeon, then you, you create a new switch, right click, insert, and you just do control uh, not self switch, uh, control switch. You select one for the first uh, battle, and then you give it a name so you remember this is fight one or fight two or whatever. And then so you'll go uh, change battle background. You don't have to do that. You can actually um, I'm, I'm probably gonna remove that. All you gotta do is set. Um, the map properties and, and specify a battle background. Um, so you can just exclude that. Just call common event, the random battle one, and then control the after the battle's over, uh, control switch, and it'll turn this burning circle off so that they can walk past. And then you you do that for however many fights you want. And I also included another little thing. So in case they they you want to stop them from just cheating, basically going from here to here fighting these two and getting the treasure, well, what's the point of having three more battles up here if they can just go across? Now, you can design your dungeon to where you don't need a lever, or, you know, just to make it a little different, you can include a lever. So, basically, they have to go up here and hit this switch, and then it hit, it controls another switch that um, turns on random dungeon lever, and when random dungeon lever is on, it'll get rid of this barrier that's blocking the way. And that's basically my random... Uh, my random repeatable dungeon where you can just continue to get any item in the game but you still have to do five random fights from any fights in the game and they can just continue to do this now obviously uh, you're gonna have sometimes where it's real easy you'll get all the easy fights but sometimes you'll get the hardest fights so you never know and that's the idea behind this this dungeon thing I'll show you guys uh, real quick how many uh, how much time I've actually had to put into my random loot I have hundred and twenty six items in my random loot tables so I've had to copy paste and change variables and change all this 126 times <laughs> I did this yesterday but it's worth it because I'm really happy with the results that I got at the end so uh, if you do something like this when you open uh, the treasure chest how you would handle this is you would just do a, a, a random uh, insert treasure chest and delete the other stuff it gives you keep all that the same then you're gonna call the random loot and then you're gonna control a switch that uh, not a self switch but you're gonna control the switch that turns it open but before you um, um, before you have the player um, re you know before you turn on the switch that closes it, you need to have the player either warp away or something. So after this is uh, is opened, the treasure will look like it's opened, and then the player is forcefully moved down two tiles, and then uh, it turns on uh, it turns off all these switches. So each one of these switches controls one of these battles or this lever. So basically, after they open the chest, the chest they're going to get a random item, and then all of these battles that they cleared are going to reappear, and the switch is going to go um, from the down position back to the up position, and then it's going to transfer the player out of uh, this map back to the monster arena that I created. So they'll be put back right here, in which case they can save the game, and they can go up talk to this NPC, and that NPC will ask them, are they sure they want to risk their life, and if they say yes, then they go back to the repeatable dungeon and they can do it again if they want and that'll give the player something else to do besides walking back and forth on the world map so a lot of interesting ideas here and obviously you can tweak these ideas and change them up how you want but hopefully this gives you guys an idea uh, to help uh, some to add some spice to your game and if you have any uh, suggestions on what kind of tutorials you want to see you want to learn how to do certain things leave it in the comment box below and I read them all so um, I'll get back to you and uh, if you like this video give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys for watching subscribe if you want more content That lets me know that this is worth making so if you want more uh, tutorials, please subscribe Thank you guys very much for watching and we'll see you all in the next tutorial